Welcome everybody. So this, um, this week has been really, really interesting. I've really enjoyed um, going into all the presentations that we've had and there's more to come. Um, there's one more tomorrow, which is Lisa Vart. And um, so today we're going to talk about um, the roadblocks in your social media visibility. So what I've come across um, since I've been online and on social media is um, certain fears and certain blocks that are stopping people from um, being visible, basically. And one of them, and the most important, is um, perfectionism. The need to be perfect. And people normally focus on how to do something, how to do a certain action, okay? And they are always thinking on the how to and how they want it to be so um, perfect and excellent and um, everything working tickety-boo. And they are stuck on that perfectionism and not moving forwards. So... Um, What happens then, in my view, and this has happened to me before in the past, I was stuck on that perfectionism for a long, long time because I was um, afraid of not having no makeup on, not having the right clothes on, uh, my setting was not right, my lighting was not right. And what has that done to me is that it's, it kept me stuck and not allow me to move forward. So, um, so what I'm saying is, um, I've got a few questions that I would want you to focus on. I've downloaded the workbook into the group and I'm gonna put it on the membership site. But um, for each area that I'm gonna talk about, each six areas that I'm gonna talk about, um, I want you to focus on Wait a minute, let's, let's move this on. I want you to focus on, um, on this question. So for perfectionism, for the need to be perfect, I want you to ask yourself, right? I want you to ask yourself, um, what makes you think, ask and write down um, your thoughts uh, about it. What makes you think that you need to be perfect? So what makes you think that you need to be perfect? And when I talk about the other, um, the other areas, then you do the same type of questions, and that's all in the workbook as well. So um, I also want you to think about and write the reasons why would you think that you need to be perfect. And also, um, when in the past you weren't perfect. Who told you that you weren't perfect? Think about that and write down. And then the last one, after all the questions, and that's on, it, on its own, is... What, what happens next? So after you have all that analysis, all that um, you assessed, you know, what you need um, to be perfect, what, uh, why, who told you, and um, when it happened, really, um, what do you actually need to happen next? And I'm going on to that one because that's then... Um, my kind of like solution to this, um, this, uh, this topics. So the second, um, the second topic, um, the second roadblock, the second block fear is people think they're always thinking I'm not an expert. Okay. And, um, you can't be an expert in everything. You can't be an, an expert in every single areas. Um, 
but you can be an expert in what you are most passionate about and you um, should always like empower other people with your passion. Um, you can learn with others and um, kind of tweak it into your own way so it differentiates you against others. So for example, um, uh, one time that I wasn't feeling like an expert was when I've quit my job and I started my own business and I started um, networking, uh, local networking, went to groups, breakfast clubs, networking, and you have this 60 second, you know, one minute kind of pitch. Um, I didn't prepare for it. And in, in, in the beginning, I didn't even know what to say because I wasn't aligned with who I was targeting. And um, I didn't really knew what I wanted to do, what I was passionate about. Um, so I didn't come across as an expert because I had the, the, you know, the mindset block, I suppose. Um, what I'm trying to say is what happened then is that with repetition, 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 which is the three little words that I wanted to say at the end, but I'm just going to put it on here now. <coughs> I'm sorry. Is, you know, I, I went back and I went back and I went back and I was like networking every single week, for example, and going to different types of networking. And the more I would say it, the more it came out of my mouth, what I wanted to do, what I was focusing on and who I was targeting, the simpler and the quicker I reached my one minute. <laughs> and then what happened is that I also started to get um, very confident um, and people starting to see my value, people starting to see my expertise, right? And they're starting to invite me to talk in different, different networks, even virtually. So, so this one is, you know, everybody is an expert on something. And um, we can't be an expert on everything, but we, ha we are an expert on something, okay? So again, ask yourself those questions, okay? The what, the why, the when, the who and what you want it to happen next. The um, third block that I want to talk about is comparisonitis. This is something that is discussed all the time and um, which is comparing yourself to others, right? And that can really stop you from doing um, more of that, what you want to do because you are constantly um, looking at that shiny object that is coming your way or you are seeing this amazing coach website and this amazing opt-in um, that you want to be like, like, uh, um, like for you, like you want that opt-in because you think that it looks cool and it's pretty, it's got nice colors and that is exactly what you want. But, um, what I'm trying to say is the more you compare yourself to others, the more you get stuck in that indecision that what you want to do and how you want to differentiate your business from others. Um, we all different and we all unique in ourselves. Um, what, for example, sanai has got um, is completely different from what Glory's got. And vice versa, and I'm unique in myself. You know, my mission is different, my vision is different, and my values are different. Okay, so <sighs> comparisonitis can really get a start, right? Um, so again, ask your questions and um, what you want to happen next. So um, by putting all the answers to those questions on paper, you kind of like, you kind of like journaling, aren't you? You kind of like digging deep into the actual cause, the, the root cause 
of, of the problem, right? Again, so the fourth one is lack of confidence. And uh, for me, um, confidence is built from episodes in your life. Um, and there are certain times in your life that things have happened. Situ you've been in situations that you either had to defend yourself or you either had to um, make a decision to go a certain way or, um, you know, you put too much weight on, for example. So your confidence has diminished in those episodes of your life. Um, but you're overtaking them. Um, people lose weight every day. Um, if you don't take the action to put a weight loss plan into place, um, how uh, do I say this? If you don't take the action to put, uh, uh, you know, to, to put the measures into place to move you forward and be stuck in that, I'm not confident, uh, you know, I don't really want to, to do it because I'm afraid that what people are going to say, they're going to hurt me, um, they're going to call me names. They, um, so... <sighs> I don't really want you to, I don't really want to tell you what to do in this case, but everybody um, fights a lack of confidence different ways. Um, what I'm trying to establish here is like, try and find those ways that you had lack of confidence by asking those questions and really pinpointing, um, you know, what happened before you lost the weight, for example, and after you've put the weight, what, what kind of transformation happened there? Um, lack of confidence is also due to cultural and sociological uh, factors. Um, cultural, because um, certain cultures have certain specific uh, ways of doing certain things, um, and that's taught by you from your parents, from your family. Um, you know, they, they teach you about discipline. They teach you about values. They teach you about being confident. Um, and so I'm lost for words now. <sighs> so, I mean, you know, it's just like, um, just really think about what was the period in your life that you had lack of confidence and then you ask those questions and then just really drill it down and um, really um, answer that to yourself and what you want to happen next. You know, what, what you want to happen next so that... Oh, uh, yeah, cool. Um, so now he's got a tip about confidence. Do you want to come in? Hello. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is <laughs> Rebecca's hand there. Um, this is just a, a really quick um, tip. It's like an NLP tip about um, going, kind of visualizing the last time you felt really confident. So it might have been a dinner party with your family where you cracked a joke and everyone laughed and you felt that inner amazing. Or you went to a party in a great amazing dress and you felt fabulous and the bell of the ball. So it's remembering a time in your life where you really felt like amazingly confident, really rock star. And in your mind, go to that place again, visualize the whole feeling and get really connected physically with that feeling. And then it's anchoring it. So it's about getting really connected with that, that feeling. And every time you, you're going into a situation like you have to go live or you're pressing the button to create a video or doing one of those things that you've talked about, comparisonitis, being, thinking you have to be perfect so you're not ready yet, and all the things we hold in our way, if you have a, an anchoring memory, a visualization, you can create that same state just before you have to do what you don't want to do, but it makes you feel amazing and it brings back that all that rush of feel-good feeling. So it's a really good tip just to push through any of the, the, 
lack of confidence blocks. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Sine. <laughs> um, so another another um, block that I've come across um, since I've been online, um, creating my business online, is uh, the fact that people are afraid of hurting other people's um, feelings. And they have this fear that their opinions are m going to be misinterpreted by others. Okay. Um, so this is, this is actually due to each individual personalities and how we, we, we communicate with, with others. And we eventually express our opinions in a way that is not appropriate. Okay. And therefore we hurt others' feelings and possibly, oh, Andrea is in the house. And possibly because we don't really want to listen to, to the truth or we, sometimes we don't know what the truth is and we think the truth is X, Y, and Z. Um, so what I'm trying to say is like listening to yourself, it will help to kind of stop you from saying something that is going to hurt others. So in the past, for me, for example, I, I was, I've always been very impulsive, impulsive in my actions and impulsive in what I say. And it wasn't until um, I grew older and older and older and with my more experience that I start thinking and listening and um, listening to others as well. Um, because before, I used to just say it out of my mouth without even thinking about it. Do you see what I mean? Um, so, I was going to say. Um, so, yeah, so when, when we think that, so think about those questions again, right? What makes you think that you are going to say something that is going to hurt, um, you're going to say something that is going to be criticized by others, right? Um, why would you think that others would judge you? And when in the past it actually happened, so we go back to that visualiz visualization tip that Sanai has mentioned, um, go back in the past and it really described that, um, that time that you've been criticized by others, uh, from what others, uh, from what you've said sort of thing. Um, and who, who, um, told you that you would, um, th that would hurt people's feelings. Um, and then, of course, then just um, really think about a way of going forward with the question, what happens, what happens next? What happens next if I listen before I talk? <laughs> um, so the last one is uh, people say, I, so now I say, I'm not responsible for other people's feelings. Yes. So that's something that you need, we need to kind of ingrain into ourselves, right? That we're not responsible for other people's feelings. When we say something, we all have our own opinions, uh, depending on what life and what you've learned and uh, what you've studied and what your expertise, there are certain topics that I don't even dare to talk about because I don't even know them, um, politics and, um, and some others. Um, so I keep stunt and I listen and I kind of see both sides. Um, and if, when I can, I, you know, I give my opinion. Um, so the last one of the blocks is, People turn around all the time and say, I've got no time. There's 24 hours in the day. 
<laughs> Take away, but five hours to sleep. How can you say you've got no time? Time is really relative for everybody. The concept of time for one person is completely different from um, the concept of time for another. We as women, we've got time for everything. We get up in the morning, we feed the kids, uh, you know, dress the kids, um, do breakfast, feed the dog, <laughs> and off we go to do our own business. Um, and we have um, specific times of the day that are scheduled to do our tasks. So when people say, I've got no time to be visible online, I, I'm very passionate about this because I'm, I can't understand it. There are so many easy ways that you can be visible online nowadays. You can just jump on a video. You know, you can do a video on your mobile, from your car, you know, walking the dog uh, in the park. There's, there's no excuses whatsoever. But uh, <laughs> this is my opinion. Um, so what... Um, what I, what, what I want to say is um, the solution for all these little blocks that I talked about, okay? Perfectionism, not being an expert, comparisonitis, lack of confidence, afraid of hurting others' feelings, and having no time. You can solve this by doing doing, doing. It's repetition, 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 you know, repetition in showing up and being persistent in your message and showing up. Repetition and being consistent and repetition in your action. You know, if you do, 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 um, if you show up in a, in a group or, um, on your website as a blog post or in your page, uh, on a video on YouTube, there's millions of ways of showing up. Millions of ways of showing up. Um, show up where your audience is. That's really important. And I want you to really um, write it down. You know, it's really important that show, you need to show up where your audience is. So assess where your audience is. If it's on Facebook, stay on Facebook. You don't need to go on the other social sites. If it's on YouTube, stay on YouTube. You don't need to go to the other ones. But you need to really assess and know where your audience is hanging out. And that's it. I just, you know, this, there's three little, three little words that I was mentioning in, before in the beginning. It was um, repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Repetition in showing up. Yeah, I'm being repetitive. <laughs> repetition in showing up, repetition in being consistent in your message, in repetition in your actions. Okay? If you can assess all these three things, you can assess them because imagine that you're being repetitive in one action and you don't see any results. Okay, change it. Change it for another action. The repetition is in the action. <laughs> knowing that specific action so yeah so that you know this is it um um i hope you really enjoy the presentation and you're going to take some um things away with you if anybody wants to come in and talk about i know andrea you haven't heard the beginning of it but if anybody has anything to say about this uh, blocks that i've spoken already please you know Unmute yourselves and talk about it. Oh, everybody's quiet. <laughs> no, Sophia, oh. I mean, I, I, just in terms of, um, I, you know, I've been, I've experienced every single one of those things, the, the comparisonitis, the perfectionism, the, just the total fear of being judged and criticised and that, that was all huge for me. And I think you're absolutely right, it is simply pushing through it and continually doing it every day, a little bit every day, until it becomes familiar. 
And, you know, it just takes one person to put a thumbs up and you instantly feel like, oh, I'm in the right place. That's nice. And, you know, it just takes that. So even if you have to get somebody in to support you saying, just will you like my post for me or watch my video to, you know, just support me. Um, and you've got an example of that, Sana. You've got a post that I think was a 3K post. Do you remember that you, yeah. you mentioned that post is the, the time that you went pro? Yeah. The week, well, the week was, that you went pro or something. Yeah, so it was a post that I'd, um, it was completely unrelated. It wasn't salesy at all. It was just a, a post to say, you know, my experience of my dad was angry when I had him my notice in and it affected our relationship for months. And it was just a little bit about, you know, how my dad and I had this friction for months. Um, and that was it. It was just like, and but people resonated with that because it was a bit of my story, but it's a bit of a story that a lot of people like us who quit our jobs and do something irresponsible, according to another generation, perhaps, that they just can't understand and a lot of people got it a lot of people understood it and from that I made thousands because people came in and it instantly said thank you so much that really resonated they went onto my website as a result they signed up because they it would just drove people to the website you know it wasn't that particular post that said oh I want to work with you but it was going to the website then and seeing where I was compared to where they were and 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 so it just yeah it and that I think that's salesy. Yeah, and I think that's the difference. Okay, and that's um, for me is something that I want to coach about because I want people to be personal. I want people to be, um, especially on social. Social media nowadays is not done like um, the marketing of the old days. You know, that is sell, 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 sell. You know, we're on social media to. Um, connect with others, to build relationships, and to show our expertise. And yeah, it takes time. But if we're not visible, if we're not showing up other people what we do, what we're good at, what we're passionate about, and our personal life as well. You know, I'm not saying um, like really horrible things. Some people are comfortable with that, and I understand. Yes, please do because um, others will resonate with you. But people are curious all the time. And curiosity in social media is something that really works. People are curious to know what you are, what you do, how you do it. And the more um, teasing or teaser or <laughs> um, you make them be curious, the better it is. Um, for example, if you have some videos uh, explaining or giving a tip or something, um, don't tell on the text of the post straight away what the tip is. Tell them, watch, because in about 30 seconds, I'm going to tell you exactly what the tip is. So they'll have to watch. So think about what action you want them to do. So if you want them to watch the whole video, right? For example, with Andrea, if you want them to, to watch the whole tapping video until the end, because it needs, you know, it's, it's a sequence of um, tapping movements they need to do, they have to stay until the end of the video. So on the text, to tease them, tease them? <laughs> on the text to tease them, you have to say something that they, is going to keep them interested to stay until the end. So what's the end result for them when they finish a tapping session with you? So, yeah, so this is my tip for today. You're muted. You want me to unmute you? Yeah. No, it's all right. I've just got kids in the background here. But, um, yeah, yeah it's, um, I guess it's feeling that release and feeling like you um, so that you can be free to move forward basically it's hard to, so it's hard to think at the minute but yeah that's it's basically so that they can be free to move forward and release the blocks that's holding them back and that's the gist of it really yeah, yeah. If, you, if you can't think of anything what i'll suggest you to do is actually ask your clients 
at the end of the tapping sessions, ask your clients how are they feeling. Um, and with those results, with what they say, you know, what, what, what they're feeling after they've done that tapping session, right, within their body. Because like yesterday, when we did that tapping session, I felt the pain going away from my back. How amazing is that? You see what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, whatever pain, because stress and fear, it's produced in pains in your body isn't it physical um if you can take away the pain that is awesome you know so make them curious to come in and know more um video is really good for that because they have to really click on the video to watch the rest of it uh, with a graphic, for example, if you have like a quote of somebody um, that you really aspire to or um, you really influence by, um, instead of putting just a quote on the top, put your thoughts about the quote. What what the, what has the quote um, made you think about, sort of thing? So. Just a little different kind of techniques that you can put on the cut on your posts and your, your content, and um, yeah, so um, now I try to if I do do a quote or something, so I just come out of the way of the mayhem. Um, yeah, if I do do a quote or something, I try and relate it back to you know the main thing that I do with people, which is breaking free from those blocks and moving forward and feeling freer and lighter, yeah, and that sort of thing. So it's all about getting rid of your limiting beliefs, getting rid of your blocks and so that you don't struggle to move forward and stuff like that. Yeah. So I try and relate it back to that and why that relates or clearing your mind or the benefits of reducing the stress, the things that the EFT does as well. So the, in the, more, the more client feedback you have as well, the more you can create different posts, isn't it? And it just comes easier and easier and easier. I think it, it is a bit tricky to actually describe the shift, the physical shift and of energy and how much you can feel like it's so much freer to move forward. I think it's very difficult to put it into words. Across. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Mm. Unless you like describe it with a lot of ad ad adjectives and this is what I mean. Um, but when you do, you physically feel that shift. You can see the thing it release from the people, so that they can move forward, and they can sort of they don't have to have that struggle anymore, and they can just move forward with it. And it's that sort of freedom and release, I suppose, is yeah. the best way to yeah. describe it. And that's the best way to describe it is by video, kind of video testimonials. They explain because you can feel it in your in their voices. The release do you know what I mean like yesterday it was really intense the pain in my lower back it was really intense like stabbing stabbing me in the back and when I did that tapping and especially after the color technique that you showed it just went <laughs> just yeah. It's like a block. It's like, if you think, I suppose, if you think of a physical block, perhaps in, it's not necessarily a nice thing, it's just off the top of my head, but in your digestive. But anyway, any sort of block that you've got, it feels stuck. It feels like it can't, it can't move. It's not the best idea, that is it? But you know what I mean? It, it's an it's a energy block. So it's blocking that energy. And then you just feel that energy being able to flow. And if you can flow, you can think better. Your mind's clearer, you know, there's so many benefits I just need to be able to get across yeah 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 so it's all those benefits and the results that gives you cl your clients that you need to, to craft yeah, your yeah. yeah so, exactly <clears throat> cool so thank you very much for coming over okay I hope you like the presentation Andrea please go back and watch it from the beginning if you want to um and if you have any questions, come to the group and ask me any questions whatsoever that you might have. So I'm going to stop recording now.